Uh, hi, my name is Bob Lawrence. I'm the general manager of the National Radio Talent System, uh, which is a part of the RAB. And I'm here to talk to you about why you need to sign up and enroll and apply for the GAB Radio Talent Institute uh, that runs between May 13th and May 18th in Athens at Grady College on the campus of UGA. For people who don't know, what is the Radio Talent Institute? The Radio Talent Institute is a completely immersive uh, program for anyone who's interested in getting into media of any kind. You know, we call it the Radio Talent Institute because there's so many different areas uh, that radio uh, focuses on. And it's not just traditional radio, it's social media, it's podcasting, it's production. It's a full immersion into every aspect of what anyone in media and uh, communications or journalism would be interested in getting in. It's a six day program uh, featuring about uh, 35 to 40 speakers uh, who come in on their own time because they wanna be mentors and talk to you about what they do and how you could be a part of the industry. To me, that's one of the most valuable parts of the Radio Talent Institute. Um, it's not just the classroom ex you know, exposure that you get in all these different sessions from all these different speakers, but you get to meet all these people over the six days um, to meet the kind of people that are going to be speaking, to meet that caliber of individual and that caliber of someone in the business could take you years. To me, that's one of the most valuable parts of the GAB Radio Talent Institute. It's uh, it's meeting those people, it's networking, it's connecting and having the opportunity to uh, to meet with them individually. You know, we usually have about 15 minutes in between all these sessions where you get up, people bring business cards and resumes. If you're looking for a job, if you're thinking about a job and even, even if you're a senior, especially if you might be a senior and you really don't know what direction you're going in and you don't have a job yet, this is something for you to explore. Uh, to me, it's I, I if you don't do it, you're missing such an opportunity that I, I can't I can't begin to tell you. I only wish it was available when I got into this business. <laughs> I had to do it the old fashioned way and beat the pavements and talk to people and find them. Uh, they're coming to you. So for you not to take advantage of this, well, that would be foolish. So <laughs> sign up. Do you have a couple of examples of people that are going to be speaking that students will be sure. connecting with? Give me a second to call that, <laughs> that agenda up. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> On the first day alone, you'll be speaking, you'll hear from Erica Farber, who's the outgoing... Uh, CEO and president of the RAB. Um, an incredible story, uh, a, a history, a quick aside. I met her when I was about 17 years old and she was the manager of a New York radio station at the age of about 26. She has done everything in this industry. Uh, just the price of admission is worth just meeting Erica Farber. Um, after that, uh, Kent Dunn, who's with Beasley Media out of Augusta and Fayetteville. He's a regional vice president. Uh, he'll be there. Val Carolyn uh, is the regional vice president and general manager of Salem Media in Atlanta. Um, going on further, uh, Chris Egan will be there on Tuesday. Uh, he's the vice president of audience and operations for, uh, for Cox Media Group, another Atlanta-based radio group that's looking for people like you. Keep in mind that all these people are coming. They want to hire people. They're looking for you guys. So take advantage of that. Uh, let me give you a few more. Lori Lewis, who is with Lori Lewis Media, she and I go back 20 years, but she is the industry maven on social media expertise and why it matters in radio. She's going to talk about creating content for social media in a digital age. Podcasting, today in the future, Mike McVeigh will be there. He's the president and founder of McVeigh Media, probably the most well-renowned and most popular consulting firm in the world, in the world, coming in to talk to you about podcasting and the future of it. There'll be air check masterclass sessions. Um, we'll be going to uh, the Atlanta Braves Truest, Truest Park 
in Atlanta on Sports Day. Uh, we'll be talking to sports broadcasters that day uh, from 92.9 The Game, Odyssey in Atlanta. Uh, I'm just going to finish up the week here. Here's Thursday. Rick Tappy, who's the senior VP and market manager for Odyssey in Atlanta. Um, we're going to have uh, Myron Magic Jigawa, who's an owner and founder of MVP Productions. He's a voiceover actor and a uh, and a voiceover person with one of the larger groups. John Dimmick, the senior VP of operations for Cumulus Media, the second largest broadcaster in, in America, will be there. Um, Jerry McKenna from Star 94.1 in Atlanta will be there. He's the brand manager and program director. He's also going to bring with him two of their personalities, Jen Hobby, who is one of the morning personalities from Star, and also Cannon, who does Afternoon Drive on Star 94.1. And they're going to talk to you about you know, what's required and what they do and what they need to put in to make a great uh, music radio show. Um, John Shambi is the owner of uh, founder and owner of Country Radio's Coach. He'll be talking about Nielsen and how ratings are acquired and analyzed and, and why that matters for programmers and sales. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to take uh, the RMP, the Radio Marketing Professional uh, course, and actually get certified by the time the course is over as a radio marketing professional, not just a certificate. We're not talking about just getting a certificate. We're talking about certification, which matters in the industry, and that goes on your resume. Um, on Saturday, uh, we'll have uh, Martin uh, Matheny from WUGA in Athens will be there. Dale Van Canfort, who's department chair of mass communications at Piedmont University, will be there. Some other, some other uh, national radio talent system graduates, including Garrett Chapman, who now works for Odyssey, and Abby Jessen, who was a graduate, now works for Cox Media in Atlanta, and Madison Parker, who was a, a student last year and graduated just last year from the national radio talent system from GAB and is working at Habersham Broadcasting in Cornelia doing morning drive. Um, Don Anthony will be there. Um, he is a morning show boot camp uh, person. He is a talent coach. Um, you know, I, I just named maybe 40% 40, 40 of the people who will be there. Each day, you're going to get many more people just like that. And, and I wish I had time to mention them all, but it would take six days to go through it all. So those are the people who are showing up. What do you have to say to people who see radio in the title and immediately disregard it? Okay. Well, you know, a lot of different services, you, you know, you've got Spotify. They use the term radio. Um, let's see, a Sirius XM satellite radio. They use the term radio. Radio is not, in fact, there'll be someone speaking about this, and I think it's going to be Erica Farber. Let me rush up to the first day here. I think that's her topic. Yeah, it's not your parents' radio. Um, this is the radio. This is the radio today. Uh, you know, that little device over there, and I hesitate to say her name because every time I say her name, she comes on and does something silly for me. Um, but, you know, if I was going to use Google Home or, or yes, you know, the Echo or, or Siri or my iPhone, all of these things are radios of the future. Uh, they were of the future. They're all today. About 50% of all radio listening is done on streaming devices. Um, so if you're thinking radio and traditional radio, look, most people who do this won't be on the radio. There's sales, there's marketing, uh, there's uh, podcasting you heard, there's digital, there's social media. So many things of what your generation are experts at that we don't know about. I'm not an expert in social media. You know, I'm a boomer. What do I know about social media? You guys know everything there is to know and are still learning. That's why people like me in this industry are looking for people like you. Um, so don't think of this as the old fashioned dad's radio or the only thing you listen to in the car. That's not it. Radio has a lot of significance today. Uh, you know, I was talking to a couple of teenagers just the other day who told me that they listen to Spotify and I get Spotify. I understand Spotify is part of our business too. It's expanded. Uh, the advantage that Spotify has over a typical radio station or a music radio station is that you can get what you need on demand. I get that. And that has value. What it doesn't offer is your community. What it doesn't offer is a tie to the people who live near you that matter. 
it doesn't offer the information and news and everything that goes into why you live where you live. And you should be part of that and you can help. Look, Erica Farber, who's my boss, talks about this all the time. Someone who takes this class, someone who takes this course and goes through the program is going to be the future, is going to come up with ways that invigorate radio to mean something totally different. So don't get stuck on a term. Get stuck on what it means to the community, to you. And it's still a fun business. It's still profitable. You can still make good money doing this. So think beyond the word radio. Think digital. Think talent that goes much deeper than being on the air. Uh, so that's what I'll say to somebody who you know throws radio in my face as a word that isn't used anymore. And who is eligible to register? Anybody, really. But mostly it's college age. We've had people as much. If, you, if you've been to school, you don't have to be enrolled. If you, uh, you know, if you're basically between the ages of 18 and 25 or 26, you're eligible to do this. We have scholarships available on many sources. I know GAB has scholarships available. There are other resources we have for scholarships. There's a $395 charge for registration, which, uh, again, there are scholarships for. There's also, if you need housing, um, there's housing available and perhaps some scholarships for that as well. Um, so, uh, you know, anybody, if you're interested in any shape or form of media, of uh, marketing, of sales, uh, of sports, of broadcasting, of journalism, of communications in any way, this is the thing for you. So um, why is it important for people of that age range to take advantage of this opportunity now at this point in their lives? Well, you know, it's important for younger people to take advantage of this now because you're on the precipice of what could be an incredible career. We all hope to have fun. I, I've always said that I've never worked a day in my life, and I really haven't. I want to do something that I love. And if you have a passion for something and you enjoy doing it every day, then you have been blessed uh, with that. Um, this is the top opportunity, an opportunity for you to find your passion. And if there's anything you that even remotely interests you about this media business, then now's the time to find out and explore that opportunity. Why young people? Why, well, people my age aren't certainly going to be looking at it. Um, you guys are about to launch a career in one thing or another. And if you're, this is fine for freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors, graduate students, postgraduate students. Um, you know, this is this is an opportunity to find your path that will make you happy. You know, we always joked around when people were saying, hey, did you have a good day today? Yeah, I wasn't digging ditches. And, now, you know, that's a job. You know, I, I have such respect for service people, plumbers and electricians, but I don't have a passion for it. I'm doing something that's providing a service that I love. You know, I started on the air. That's what my history is. I've been on the air. I've been in sales. I've been a program director. I've been a general manager. Uh, I've been here uh, working for NRTS. The job you have, your first job, you will never have again. You know, it's and and you probably won't keep the same job throughout your whole career. Very few people do. You know, back in my parents' days, you started something, you were in a factory, or you did something that you were trained for, and that's what you did. You did it the rest of your life. Not anymore. If you're in this business, you could go from being on the air become a program director, become a general manager, get into marketing, get into sales, where the real money is, by the way. You know, here's a challenge for you. Go sit at a radio station and watch who gets in the nice cars. The people in sales get in the nicest cars. Um, so that's an old joke, but, it, but it's really actually quite true. So uh, that's why younger people like you should absolutely take advantage of an opportunity that's being given to you, that's being presented to you with no barriers. There are no barriers. So my question to you might be, why wouldn't you do this? What in the world would stop you from doing this? What, to take six days out of your summer break? Yeah, okay, no big deal. Six days that might pay off for you for the rest of your life. Right. Um, so you've kind of touched on this a little bit already, but how is the Institute kind of gonna prep and prepare students to enter the workforce? That's a good question. Um, 
every aspect of this business, every aspect of media for the most part, including journalism, if you're into news, if you're into writing, if you're into creativity, if you're into production, if you're into you know, uh, social media, digital sales, whatever aspect of media that you're actually into, this covers it and gives you a, a diving board, a, a board that you're just ready to leap off and get that head start because no one else is offering that. And I, I said it earlier on, for you to meet the kind of people that you're going to have an opportunity to meet is, oh my goodness, uh, it took me years, years to meet people, uh, the kind of people that we're talking about here. And I read some of those people to you. So, um, you know, there's there's no better time than right now. And that goes for, especially if you're a senior and you don't know what you're doing and you don't know where you are. And, you know, you, I don't have a summer job yet. Okay, well, if you don't have a summer job yet and you're graduating, well, then goodness gracious, take advantage of this. But if you're a freshman or a sophomore and just dabbling and going, hmm, what do I want to do? Make the investment. Take the opportunity to try it. You know, I always taught my own children about go for something you feel passionate about and just do it. And if you don't like it, you know, don't do it. Now, I'm not a plan B kind of person. You know, someone said, what was your plan? What was your plan A? Well, my plan A was to go into radio. Actually, I was pre-med at first, but that didn't work out because I had terrible study habits. But, uh, but uh, you know, my plan A was to get into radio. And uh, well, what's your plan B? I don't have a plan B. My dad used to say, well, you need a plan B. No, if you have a plan B, you're going to default to that. Uh, you know, if you have a plan A, that's what you're going to strive for. Now, your own parents may disagree with that philosophy, uh, but I'm, I'm a firm believer in go for what you love to do and don't worry about a backup because a backup will come in the event you're not able to achieve the goal you want. You'll think of something else then. But if you've got a backup, it, it gets difficult. All careers can be difficult. All careers are tough to get into. This is an opportunity that gives you a head start. So, uh, you know, take advantage of it. And finally, what are you most looking forward to for this year's Radio Talent Institute? You know what? I love seeing the people. I'm the one who, who, who calls all these speakers and asks them to participate. What fascinates me most is that's the easiest part of my job. That's what I love most is that the people who are coming, I've had people call me, hey, when's the Institute and how do I sign up? Why? Because that's what invigorates me is that everyone coming to this does it. The, some of these people are traveling distances. They're, you know, Atlanta is not a hop, skip, and a jump. It's, it's what, an hour and 40 minutes away from Athens, but they're coming. They're going to drive there and drive back. Some people are coming from Tennessee and Kentucky and, and, and uh, other, other areas. Um, you know, so I love the fact that everybody wants to be a mentor. Um, and don't be afraid to ask for help. There is my, my best advice to you is no matter what you do, whether it's this or anything else, never be afraid to ask someone who's doing it for a little bit of help. Let me tell you a quick story. Do I have a minute to tell a quick story? Yeah. Quick story is there's a guy by the name of Steve Jobs, and I'm sure that even despite your youth, you've all heard of who Steve Jobs is, the guy who came up with, with the iPhone. Um, when he was in high school, he wanted to build something, and he was a very creative, very obviously he was a genius. He wanted to build something, and he called this uh, a, a guy by the name of Bill Packard. And uh, he was the president of this local company in Silicon Valley. And he said, uh, hey, I'm looking for this part. I'm trying to build this thing. And the guy says, well, come on over and talk to me about it. This was in the early 70s. And he came over, and he talked to Bill Packard. Bill Packard is half of Hewlett Packard, the company you know as HP who makes printers and computers. Uh, but he had the guts to simply pick up his phone and call the president of Packard, Bill Packard himself, out of a phone book, a phone book. That's a thing we used to use to look up phone numbers, but I digress. Um, you know, it's, it's an amazing kind of story. So Jobs uh, did that throughout his career too. He, everybody who comes to this wants to help you. Why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you take the opportunity, whether you're interested in this or just thinking about it, why wouldn't you take an opportunity where people are giving you their time? That's what excites me about being there is seeing that. Um, 
There, there's nothing, there's not a better feeling to know that we are preparing a new generation for this industry. And that excites me.